Hi guys, welcome, welcome. My name is Vera and today I'm going to show you how to paint our beautiful Midnight Fairy. Super, super fun painting. So hopefully you all came with a pre-sketched outline. Um, if you don't know where to locate the outline, there is a link. It's a Dropbox link in the description of this video. So make sure you open that and the image will pop up and then you can use that image to um, transfer it onto your canvas. If you're not sure how to do it, there are a couple different ways you could do it. One of the ways is you could print it on a home printer and then you can put it behind your canvas. I'm using, by the way, eight by 10 inch canvas. It's fairly small. And this is what my printout looks like. I printed it and then I actually chopped the ends a bit. I chopped the ends to just make it easier to fit at the, at the back of my canvas and then you just put it in, you adjust it as needed and then you put it over some light source such as a window or glass door or a lamp and then as the light shines through your sketch and then through your canvas you just take a pencil and you outline that. So uh, make sure you do that before you move on to the painting. If you need a couple of minutes, that is okay. This is a video tutorial, uh, so you can do this. You can ba come back and do this anytime. It is not live. You're not going to miss anything. So if you need to take a couple moments to do your outline, that's not a problem. You can do that. If you want to do it at a later date and you want to just maybe watch today and see how it goes, um, that's totally fine too. The outline is not going anywhere. So does the video. The video is going to remain right here. So feel free to do that. All right, so I have my canvas eight by 10 inch, my outline. If you're using larger canvas, it's not a problem. You just may need to enlarge your outline for whatever size of the canvas you choose to work with. And notice guys, I only sketched the fairy and the flower. A flower is even not that necessary because we can freehand the flower. I would say the hardest part that you kind of want to focus on as far as outline it's just the silhouette of the fairy itself because the wings we can freehand they're not that difficult the flower we can freehand all those beautiful grass and leaves and plants we're gonna freehand a uh, moon we're gonna um, use something circular to outline by the way you're gonna need something circular of any size there's no particular size that you have to have just to outline our moon so grab some wool or maybe lid from something plate whatever you have yeah and the rest of the things we're gonna freehand so I'm gonna put this one aside for a second and this is the image that I'm gonna be referring to every now and then because this is my original here but also I'm gonna put it away so I don't have two of them on a table and you can refer to the image that you can see on the right of your screen at all times just makes it a lot easier and also we're going to need some paint and brushes and water. So let's go through the rest of our supplies to make sure we all prepared and we have everything that we need. And then we'll move straight to painting. So you know where to find outline in the description of this video. It's a Dropbox link. Just click on it and it will pop and then you can print it on a home printer and transfer it onto your paper. If you don't have home printer, another way you can do this is A, first you can open it on device with a large screen and then put a piece of paper regular piece of paper over the device that has a large screen and outline it with a pencil and then do the same thing that i did with my printout so instead of using the printout you take the image that you transferred from device onto paper and then from paper onto canvas so that's another way you could do this and of course you can use transfer paper and do whatever works for you all right sketch aside you're gonna need paint I have my primary colors today, just pretty much as always. We always try to use primary colors because A, we don't want to request you guys to buy new paint every time. As long as you have the five primaries, we can mix anything, right? So it makes it a lot cheaper and better on storage as well. You don't have to store 100 million jars of paint that will eventually, if not used, dry up and you know, you're going to throw away the money. Um, and B, it's good for learning. It's good for learning how to mix colors. 
So grab primaries. I'm using red, blue, yellow, plus black and white. Uh, the important uh, colors here are blue and pink. So yellow, you can use any yellow. For red, it, it always have to be red with more of a magenta base. So do you see, it looks more like a very hot pink when I take it more transparent. It's more magenta based red. And that's what you want because this painting is quite heavy on purple tones and you can't get them out of a red that has orange premixed into it. So any red that has more like an orangey undertone is not gonna work for you. You have to have a red that has more of a pink or undertone. So any magenta-like color will be really great. Even if you don't have primary red, you can substitute with hot pink or you can substitute with a straight magenta. So anything on a pinker side would really work well for you. And for blue, we would recommend here for phthalo blue or primary blue. And the reason why is if you, so for phthalo blue or primary blue, or maybe even greenish blue, they're all on a colder side, which means when you mix them with a little bit of yellow, they're gonna give you beautiful, vibrant teals, mint, and all aqua colors. So all those colder, greener colors, which we have plenty of in this painting as well. And um, if you use, let's say warmer blues such as ultramarine blue or any blue that has more like a tint of purple to it unfortunately they're going to give you a very very muddy color so when you try to mix teals and greens and so on so that's why we recommend primary or phthalo blue for this black white and yellow whichever it doesn't matter and of course if you guys are not into mixing paint you're more than welcome to use pre-mixed if that's what you prefer totally fine now moving on to brushes for brushes i would say it's always best we always recommend using three different brushes large medium and small and the reason why is just for convenience and best results because for large areas such as background it's always best to use larger brush for medium areas it's always best to use medium brush and there are certain areas such as wings let's say the whole fine details on our fairy um, all those leaves or at least the majority of them that you can't really get with any brush other than a small brush so this one I would say is the most important one because this too you can use anything whatever works this one I mean it has to be a particular brush it has to be a brush with a nice pointy tip so you can get really fine details so as long as you have a good small brush other two you can use whatever in my case today they are rounded brushes large and rounded medium I would say my large was in a pretty rough shape which is perfect for any galaxy type of paintings because the rougher brushes will give you a better texture and a better blending but I mean don't rough up your brushes just for that if you have a rougher brush great you can use it so yeah I'm gonna use rounded rounded pointy with a really nice needle-like tip and of course you're gonna need some water we can't paint without water and we're gonna need a paper towel to dab our brushes on it so the first thing that i'm gonna do after having my sketch of the fairy here is i'm gonna take something circular again you can take anything you want place it wherever you think it should go and then outline it and then just gonna be our moon I generally like keeping it on an upper part so horizontally I would say the middle and vertically somewhere on the upper part so place it wherever you want to and then just go ahead and outline it Ta -da! that's our moon okay I'm gonna put that away Right away, I don't need it, same as pencil. That's the only uh, why I needed the pencil. And now we're gonna move on to our painting. So what I usually like to start with is the general background. Now, are you gonna go over your fairy and mushroom? It's up to you. If you're not afraid to lose your lines, you can go right over them. If you're afraid to lose them, you can work around them, but don't be afraid to get a little bit into them because they the fairy is going to be black so we will easily cover it up with the black so you're not afraid to really ruin them as long as you don't lose your shapes that's all we're looking for and of course wings 
don't even worry about them go right over them so we're gonna do multiple shades here I'm gonna start with my light blues and I'm gonna expand into darker blues and then I'm gonna add some purples as well I'm gonna start with my large brush I'm gonna dip that in the water lightly dab it off on a paper towel I'm gonna scoop some white and some blue on the side mix them up in no particular proportion I'm looking to make about medium light blue I would say and with this blue I can start by literally just going around my moon so do you see I just painted over my fairy's leg but I can totally see my line so there's no reason for me personally to avoid it because I can just see it right through if it was a darker color I probably would have avoided it just to make sure I don't fully lose my shape um, the same with the moon if it gets a little bit on your moon don't worry about it we'll clean it up because moon doesn't come first here now I'm gonna start adding uh, a bit more blue here let's make this color and with this color I'm gonna go right around it so it's gonna look quite messy I like going in more like a circular almost hurricane like motion blending it to, into my light blue here I usually add it right beside my color first so I don't add it right on the edge with blue add it right beside it and then a circular motion in blend it in to my blue all right let's do a little bit more and then I'm gonna move to my darker colors Now I'm going to move to straight dark blue, so I'm going to take a little bit of straight dark blue, not a lot, and then I'm going to go right onto the edge here, and from there I'm going to soft blend it in. So again, while my brush is still really wet and fresh of paint, so again I'm going to refill it and show you guys on the other corner. So I'm not taking too much paint, I'm taking just what I need. It's still more like a dry brush technique because again, I'm not using the enormous amount of paint. And then while my brush is still super fresh and has ton of paint, I'm gonna go closer to the edge. So that's where I want it to be darker, right? And then I'm gonna circle there. And then as my brush is running out of paint, I'm gonna continue circling it a little bit closer towards my moon. Uh, so then the super foggy effect, effect happens and why it happens because a I'm not using a lot of paint I'm using bare minimum B I am not pushing on my brush hard I'm doing basically this do you see I'm lightly scraping the surface of the canvas and I will wash it off don't worry our moon is not gonna be blue we'll get rid of it it's not a big deal this is just me showing you so do you see I barely I'm barely scraping the surface of my canvas in a circular motion and this is what it does it creates this nice transparent effect which is exactly what I'm looking for All right, let's refill our brush a couple of more times. I'll add some darkness to this side too. This is just straight dark blue, not mixed with anything. I'm 
And maybe I'll go a little bit further with it here. Do some on the other side too. This one I'm not going to go as heavy because there are going to be a lot of purples there. All right, now as that's drying, I can move on some purples and some pinks here. So I'm going to start with those lighter purples that almost look like pinks. And make sure you wash your brush really well. Dab it off on a paper towel. I'm going to take some white on the side, not a lot. Some red. And ta-da! This looks nice and pink. Now, you could technically even use just straight hot pink here. Do you see how nice and vibrant that is? Or you can turn it into purple. That is entirely up to you. So I'm going to start maybe with even just straight pink here. So I'm going to take some of this color. I'm going to start with this little nice spot here, let it there, and then I will blend it into surrounding blues. And that's actually going to turn it into purple by itself, because what is purple? Purple is pink and blue. So as I'm adding my pink, and as I'm blending it lightly into surrounding blues, it actually naturally turns into my purple. But if your paint is already dry, then you may need to actually add a tiny smidge of blue to your pink paint to manually make it more purple. So again, spreading it a little bit there. Maybe I'll even color the whole corner because I can add darker purple on top. Dark colors are so easy to add on top. Now let's go on to the other side. I'm going to take some of my pink and we'll go somewhere right here. You see again I didn't mix purple this is just by what happened to my brush while I was blending this pink into the blue it just naturally got quite purple all right I don't really think I need even more there I mean I could add some more but I will likely be adding more darker purples there so let's just add a little bit more pink and then we'll move to our purples Let's pink it up a touch somewhere right here. All right, and I might even add more pink there, but I'm gonna wait until it dries because I don't think I can make it any lighter just yet because it's pretty wet and it's pretty dark. So let's finish with dark colors and then we'll go with light colors. So moving to our darker purple. So again, darker purple is we're not adding any black notice to it. We're just adding red, blue, and a smidge of white if needed, depending on how dark you want it. Like if you want it medium dark, then yeah, add a smidge of white. If you want it super dark, do not add any, add any white. And I'm gonna go right here first. I'm gonna add some purple right here. I'm 
a bit to the bottom too. And then I'm going to do dark purple. So the dark purple is the same, it just doesn't have any white. So I'm going to mix it on a separate spot. I'll take some e red, some blue, but less blue than red, because a blue is just more dominant color in general. And you see, it almost looks like black, even though it is not black, it is purple. It's just so concentrated that it looks like black. So that's what I'm going to take. And I'm going to go ahead and add a bit of the same of what I've been doing here. Just to this purple this time, and you see it darkens it up really nicely. So again, starting with the edges, making our way. Alright, so darken up here, darken up here, maybe I'll darken up a bit more. This looks like a good spot to darken up as well. Maybe even going up here. And I may as well darken up the edges here. So you can do them with straight dark purple or Another option for darkening up those two edges would be a blue mixed with a smidge of black. So let me show you what that looks like as well. And you can do both too. It doesn't, it doesn't mean you have to choose one or the other. I mean, with this type of paintings that are very galaxy-like, you can't really ruin them by adding a little bit more of something. So let's take... I washed my brush, by the way. Dabbed it off on paper towel and I'm taking some blue. I'm adding a little bit of black. And even a little bit of black, it makes it look, look pretty black. So anyway, I'm going to take a bit of that. And... I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just applying it now. And then I'm going to dry my brush a bit more on paper towel, so it doesn't have too much paint. And I'm going to go swirl them in. The same type of blending technique that we used everywhere else. I'm just being a little bit more cautious this time because there is black in there. And as you know, black is quite dominant color. All right, that looks really nice. I don't think I want to be adding any more darker colors. So do you see the darkness of that? I know it's hard to see because it reflects, but for me personally, that's perfect. And I do like what's happening here. I may add a bit more pink once this dries up, but I can't add it now because again, it's too wet. It's just not going to take it. So I'm going to wait until it dries. But what I could do, and this is super optional, you guys, is you can paint your edges because right now they're super messy and just not great looking. So just take whatever the darkest color goes to the edge and color match it. So for example, for top, it's blue mixed with black. So I'm just going to take some of that. I'm literally going to paint my edge with it because I like the look of finished edge. I think it just gives the painting a whole new look. This painting is also quite heavy on black. So you could technically even do your edges black in the end so you don't have to spend time on it now but also we're waiting for everything to dry anyway so we may as well i don't see why not
All right, so I added the top. I may as well texture it up a bit so it matches the texture up front. As I go lower, there's more purples there. So I'm gonna move back to my purples. And again, if you need to mix it again, go for it, you know how to do it. And then whenever you have it, you can add it. Again, it doesn't have to be like a perfect color match as long as it's sort of in the same color scheme. That's what we're looking for. So I wouldn't, you know, spend a ton of time here being too concerned about it. Unless you want it to be perfect, in which case you can. I don't want to discourage you from doing that either. Just don't want to, you know, add another stressful element. This looks good to me. Done. And this looks really good to me. Do you see now the edges are finished? It almost like the image extends all the way around. Okay, so this is quite dry, so I think I could move on to my lighter colors. And from lighter ones, I definitely want to add some teals around our moon because we don't have that yet. And I want to add a bit more pinks here. So it doesn't matter where you start. I may start with teals because this is a drier section that's been drying for a longer time. And we'll give my pinks just a couple more minutes to dry up. So I am going to take, <coughs> sorry guys, I'm going to make light teal here. I'm going to take some white on the side. I don't need much of it. Then I'm going to take a little bit of blue, mix them up, make nice and light blue. And then to that, I'm going to take just a tiny smidge of yellow. If you overdo it, it's going to turn into green really fast. And that's just not the color we're looking for. So it's always good to add uh, yellow little by little. So do you see this is perfect? But again, we can adjust it. So I can start with this color. You see it's nice and light. It's definitely lighter than what I have, which is the goal. And then using dry brush technique, using just a little bit of paint, I'm going to start rubbing it around my moon like a little glow you don't have to go all around your moon but choose a couple areas and add it there so i'm going to add it here little glow and i'm going to add it right here too i may need to make some more because i didn't make a lot of it And very, very lightly using just <coughs> tiny smidge of paint. I need a bit on my moon too. Adding that nice light glow. Now to the same color, I'm gonna add a bit more white to 
make it lighter and a smidge more yellow and I know it's gonna look a little green-ish but that's okay for this particular one because we want it lighter and here I'm gonna add it right there so you see nice glow even glowier than before so a second layer of glow this one is lighter Sometimes if I find that I have too much paint on my brush that it, it's hard to create that <coughs> lightness and fogginess, I would dab it off on my paper towel and then I find that it gets a lot easier. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Maybe I'll add a little bit more of this color right here, too. It's another spot where I wouldn't mind a bit of that lighter glow color. All right, and I do want to add a little bit of that pink again, because I feel like it, this is great, but I wouldn't mind it going a little bit higher. So I'm gonna wash my brush, dab it off on a paper towel, then I'm gonna scoop some, with a dry brush by the way, scoop some white on the side, add a little bit of red to it, make any shade of pink that you want, whatever you think is good for your painting. And then again, using dry brush technique, maybe I would even dab off some of my paper towel just to make sure Okay, let's go a little bit darker. See, I tried it and it looks a touch light. So let's add a bit more red slash pink in here. We'll saturate, make it a bit more saturated. And then we'll go right here. And with again, dry brush technique, right light, very nice and light, rubbing, dubbing. I'm gonna bring it up, 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 up. Beautiful. So I brought it a little bit up. Let me even bring it a bit further here. But do you see how nice and light? It's totally up to you again where you want to stop. I might bring it a bit further, but again, it's not a requirement. And, and notice how lightly I'm doing it. You can barely tell that it's there. It looks almost like a little powder. Like I'm adding a bit of pink powder and all because I'm barely using paint. Barely using paint. All right. Oh, there's a lighter spot right here too. Maybe we're gonna add a bit more there. So yeah, wherever you want to. Okay, looking good. Now I'm gonna wash off my brush, dab it off on a paper on a paper towel. Make sure it's nice and clean. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take straight white. And with my straight white, I'm going to color in my moon. So again, if you're afraid to lose your outlines for the fairy, then try to avoid them. If not, go right over them. Another option, you can always make them a bit darker with your uh, pencil before doing this as well. If you, let's say, start and you realize that it's hard to see them through, you can just, before you continue doing everything with white, take back your, pick up your, pick up back your pencil and just go over them again. And the whole fairy, well, at least the whole moon behind the fairy. Again, up to you whether you want to go right over your fairy or be careful and just do, um, the surroundings of the fairy and not the fairy itself so either is fine
All right, and after that, we're gonna make sure our brush is dry. So dab off the extra paint on a paper towel and lightly, with very, very minimum of paint, go around your moon a little bit to create that little glowing halo. Like this, do you see? And you can refill your brush as needed. So for me, I need to refill it now a little bit. Again, I'm taking bare minimum of paint, really rubbing it into my brush, then dabbing off the extra on my paper towel. And then lightly, lightly going around my moon for that nice glowing halo. And you can repeat this process as many times as needed until you have the result that you're looking for. Right, and right here I'm gonna bring in a little bit of my blue. So whatever blue you have, or you can make any blue. So I'm gonna take some white, a little bit of blue, mix them up. You can dab off the extras on a paper towel. I'm just gonna bring it right here. Super lightly. Even maybe a little bit here, but you see how nice and light. So like this. If you have a little bit of purple left, or if you want to make some, you can add that too. So let's say we'll take some red, some blue, mix them up, and make them purple. I am literally making dark purple, but then I'm taking my brush, dabbing off as much of it as I can. And while my wet is, white is still wet, I'm rubbing in bare minimum of that purple. And as I'm rubbing it into my still wet white, it's going to blend into just the right shades for me. But you can always pre-mix just the right color so you don't have to rely on the wet paint and, you know, the dryness of your brush and all the other variables. So if it's easier for you to just pre-mix the light purple and use that straight, that's totally fine. All right, I like this, this looks really good to me. Um, I can still, by the way, see my lines. I know it's hard to tell on camera, but if you look closer, I can see my outline, which is great. I might add a bit more white smudging here and there. Uh, so I might take a bit straight white Again, dry brush technique, so basically taking bare minimum, rubbing it in, and maybe I will add some even right here, coming outside the moon, just like a little glow. But do you remember we did that yellowy light color? Just like a little bit of it. Looks great. Last couple of smidges of halo. And then I can move on to my white splatter because there is a white splatter here. There's actually quite a bit of splatter. Um, so I'm going to start with the white one. Super simple, still taking large brush. This time I'm watering down my white. So I take a little bit of white on the side, I water it down. I again, bring it all the way into the bristles of my brush. Do you see, it goes everywhere into my brush. So don't take like a blob of it. And then you can either do this and it's gonna be a larger splatter. Or, do you see, you could do this. That's gonna be a much smaller splatter. 
You can do combination or you can do this way too. All that gives you different type of splatter. So try whichever works for you. I like combining everything usually, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I'm gonna splatter all around my moon. So I'm not aiming to cover all those edges. I'm mostly aiming for around the sections. If it gets a little bit further, that's okay. There is nothing wrong with it. But I'm not aiming specifically onto inside of the moon or onto the edges. I'm aiming at around this halo section. I'm gonna go a little bit heavier and around this place and around this place. So those two places are gonna go a smidge heavier. All right, that looks pretty good to me. I will be adding a bit of other colors there as I add a touch like a glow of this light yellows, but that's gonna be later once our fairy is positioned. <coughs> so for now, we don't really need anything except a splatter. So what we need next is actually for this to dry, because next we're gonna move straight on to making our fairy, uh, but it's best if all your white paint, including splatter, is dry. So what you could do is you could take a tiny little break um, if you have a blow dryer nearby, you can grab a blow dryer and literally help it out a bit by blow drying your image. Blow drying speeds it up so much. It will take you a literally a minute or less than a minute to dry it all up fully with a blow dryer. Or you can take a nice five minute break and walk around and do something. What I'm personally going to do is I'm going to just pause this video recording for a couple minutes. It shouldn't take much. Um, and I'm going to let it naturally dry. But again, since you guys are watching it from the video recording, I would say if you want to follow along and continue as soon as I continue, because for you it's going to feel like one second, me drying and coming back. So if you want to follow along, blow dry it. It's the fastest way of doing it. And I will see you guys in what feels like a second. All right, guys, everything is dry. So I'm gonna move to my fairy. I am going to grab my small brush and my black paint. I'm gonna get right into it. So I'm just gonna start by literally following my outlines now something you could do if let's say you completely lost your outlines you can just do the same thing that you did to sketch it again and just pre-sketch it again grab the same piece of printout that you had put it at the back of your canvas put it over the light source again so you basically can definitely just repeat the same steps And again, if there are certain lines you can see, you can either just make them up and freehand them because not all of them are difficult. Or again, you can grab a pencil and just sketch them first. If you prefer that, just make sure your paint is dry if you decide to sketch because later on, if the line goes wrong and you need to erase it, you would only be able to erase it if you did it over the um, dry paint. If your paint was wet, 
Unfortunately, your line is going to be stuck there forever. So little by little, slowly, slowly. All right, let's move on to flower. So the flower, I can partially see it and partially not. But again, I don't think it's a problem. Whatever you can see, just paint that, whatever you cannot. So all those things, I can't really see my previous sketch, but I'm just going to paint flower petals because I don't see why not. I don't see why they need to be pre-sketched. It's very simple. They don't have to look exactly precisely like that. As long as they look like flower petals, all great. Right, let's continue lower. Now the foot I can't really see, but I think I'll be just fine freehanding it. Again, feel free if you need to re-sketch it, feel free to grab a pencil. I think freehanding it is not a big deal, it's not a crazy complicated element here. Skirt again. If you can see it and can follow your line, great. If not, make it up. Not a big deal, it's just a skirt.
Okay, so I added all that. Now I'm gonna add, do you see she's wearing a flower crown? So there are little pieces of flower um, on the silhouette. So we're just gonna add a couple of dots here. Assuming then there is just a beautiful flower crown there that you can't really see because it's just a silhouette against the moon, right? But we're assuming it goes right here. So on the front and the back. We can add some little lines and specks and whatnot. Um, then you can add on the stem of the flower. You can add little leaves. All right, and now I'm gonna move on to the wings. So I'm gonna start by just doing the outline that we have pre-sketched. And even with the outline, I would suggest if you can make it uneven, that would be awesome. So don't try to make it like a Sharpie line that's all even all around. You wanna make it uneven, or as uneven as possible. Right, I like that. And now we're gonna fill it with um, all those lines. So I like doing this freehand. Again, if you're afraid of freehand work, you can always pre-sketch it with a pencil and then go with uh, your black paint whenever you're ready for it. So it's entirely up to you. For me personally, I'm just gonna go right in. And I'm gonna start by filling this wing, the biggest one, with um, lines that go lengthwise. Again, I'm gonna try to make them a little bit uneven, generally pretty fine in thickness, and some uh, distance between the lines is going to be bigger, some distance between the lines is going to be smaller. All right, that looks good. You see, I added quite a few and they're on a different distance from one another. And now I'm gonna separate some of them with horizontal lines, but I'm gonna keep those horizontal lines mostly closer to the ends of my wings. So and I'm not gonna separate all of them. So just choose a few. And again, they can be a bit bigger in size, they can be a bit smaller. That's entirely up to you. We're almost like imitating, if you ever have seen what, um, what's the name? Dragonfly wings look like. You know how they have these little cells in them? So that's pretty much, we're almost doing it like that, like a dragonfly wings in a way, structure-wise. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing with all my remaining wings. So I'm going to do this one next just because these two wings, I can see them the best, right? Because they're closest to us. 
and the other two we can't see them as much so we don't really need to focus as much on them the other one so this one as you can see I'm not doing as much detail and this one barely any like you can add a line or two but honestly don't bother with this back ring so much just make sure you can see the outline that's more what you're looking for and this one you can add a couple separation lines if you want to But again, don't go crazy. All right, my wings are done. And now I'm going to move on to the surroundings. So I'm going to do my mushroom and then all those beautiful um, florals around it. And that's where you can really experiment and see what you want, what you want to do. So I'm going to start with my mushroom. I'm just going to, again, take some black. We're going to do the leg, the bottom of the stem of the mushroom. All right, now we're going to move on to all of those grass and leaves. And of course, you can do the combination of anything you want for this um, greener, well, the greenery. Technically, it's greenery, but it doesn't look green since it's a silhouette. So again, I'm going to use my black. I'm going to make sure it's nice and liquid. So I'm going to be watering down as I go. Not for a transparency, but just for a better, much more liquid consistency. And I'm going to start, I usually like starting with larger things. So I'm going to add, there are a couple larger leaves here. So I'm going to add them. So one side, second side, and then color it in. Then maybe a few here. So I'd added a couple there. Um, what else should I add? Maybe one more right here. Okay, so now I have a few large ones there. Um, let's finish the side. So I'm gonna add what looks like 
a little flower here. I'm going to add a stem. And from the end of that stem, lots of little lines coming out everywhere. And I'm going to add some dabs at the end of those lines. Maybe a couple of leaves coming out from that flower. Then I'm going to add a little branch here. So a little line and then from that branch I'm going to add a few leaves. Then I'll add another little branch here with flowers. But again, do whatever works for you. You don't have to do it exactly the same. So you see a little branch and then a few small branches coming out of it. And then dabs at the end of those little branches for the leaves. And maybe a couple small leaves here. If you want to add something else here as a filler, you can, like a leaf or a grass. And here I'm just going to fill it with leaf, uh, with grass that goes towards my mushroom. So little flicks from the outside in. Maybe even around this flower here too, just to fill the edge a little bit more with something. All right, that's my left side. I mean, again, feel free to add anything else that if you feel like there should be something more here. Feel free to add it. All right, now I'm going to move to the side. So I'm going to start with these two large ones here. So I'm going to put stems for them. Not technically, those are not stems, but like the middle of Those little branches. And then I'm still going to start adding leaves on each side. So I'm going to start with the smaller ones, and as I go lower, my leaves are going to get larger and larger and larger. All right, so let's add a couple more large ones here. I'm going to add a couple more larger leaves somewhere around here. Uh, 
and then we can add a few so I'm gonna add a few flicks and some more leaves on them but those are gonna be smaller so I'm just gonna do dabs I'm not gonna really draw them I'm just gonna do dabs from each side you see from the outside in like a little flick Don't have to again see for yourself what your painting needs and then i'm going to flick some from the bottom up right here and if you want to you can fill a bit of uh, the bottom here with a bit more grass so it just looks a bit more solid by flicking some from the bottom up but also you don't have to if you don't want to all right and that's all my greenery i have lots of it i don't think i need any more maybe i'll add one more all right some more right here so see for yourself for your painting does it need something if it needs it add it if it doesn't don't and that would be pretty much all that i need with black now do you see how solid my bottom is so there is point for me at this point i can just take this black and color in my bottom because my bottom is the whole line looks black so it makes sense and for the side it's up to you you can just flick some add um flick some black on the edge or if you or if you want you can you know be precise and actually extend each piece um of greenery that you painted onto the edge and literally wrap them around i'm gonna do a little bit of a cheat here i'm just gonna do this so I don't have to spend too much time on the edges but again it's entirely up to you all right almost done you guys so as that's drying there is a little bit um, of something we can do on our background so we can do a bit of those yellow flicks here so I'm going to be using my small brush for that i'm gonna take some white i'm gonna mix some yellow now you could technically do just light yellow but if you find that it's a too much contrast then we're gonna make a color similar to what we used here so like a yellowy green but very light so do you see like a mint color and so on but it has to be light let's try it this is too similar to background so again i'm gonna add more white more yellow to it because it has to pop from a background so let's try this one do you see now this one you can see a little better but i feel like i'd rather still go a little bit lighter and yellower and let's see so you can put a couple dots here on a background around the wing and then tap them with your finger lightly so you see they look like a little glows again I could probably go even more uh, vibrant here with my yellow to make them pop a bit more oh yeah this is better do you see I did a bit more yellow a bit more white and now I'm just adding a couple dots and then I'm tapping them with my finger So a bit of there and then I'm gonna add some on the wings so on the wings I'm not gonna be tapping it with my finger I'm just gonna color in some of those little cells but also you can if there's a straight line you can even add a couple on a straight line as well so we're just filling it almost not entire ring but we're filling some of those sections with that yellow to make it look like that light reflection from the moon um, is getting caught 
and this beautiful almost what looks like a web on a wings All right, do you see? Okay, and now I'm going to add a bit more of that here. So again, add a dot, tap, 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 add a dot, tap, tap, tap. Adding a bit of that glow there. And if you want to just add a couple dots that are not um, dabbed, just the really small ones, like little specks, you could do that too. color that I'm going to do is going to be pink. So I'm going to make pink again, any shade of pink that you prefer. So I'm going to take my small brush, scoop some white on the side, and then I'm going to add a little bit of red. I'm not going to go with a crazy um, vibrant pink. I think I'm going to stay on the lighter side here. And again, I'm going to start with the wing. And I'm just gonna add it mostly closer to the edges of my wings and the goal is pretty much the same it's just the reflection of whatever is going on in the background uh, getting caught in a ring and you can even do a multiple shades of pink if you prefer you can start with lighter pink and then add an addition of a slightly darker pink All right, so I think this is enough for me personally. This looks good. I don't think I want to be adding any more um, pink there, but I will add a little bit of pink. Or you could do purple potentially, whatever you want to do, guys. Pink or purple on my mushroom. Just a little bit right here to get a bit more texture and break it up because it's such a large, dark element, right? And then if you want to add a bit of that pink or purple to any other areas such as leaves, you can. Like for example, here you can break it up a little bit, right? Because it's a large section. Uh, if here you wanted to highlight some of your leaves, you could, because again, it's a large section. But also, you don't have to. It's not a requirement. This is all very optional. And then I'm just going to add some black and white and we'll finish. So for the black, I'm going to add a couple elements on our fairy 
And for me, the only elements are missing that are little dots at the end of the skirt and little pom-poms. Oops, that one didn't go as planned. Little pom-poms on the feet. And then I'm gonna finish with white. And so what I'm gonna do for the white is again, I'm gonna make sure my small brush is nice and clean. I'm gonna take a little bit of white All right, and I'm gonna start at my wing. So again, just the same way that I did my uh, yellow and my pink, I can add a little bit of white, but don't get too carried away with white, just a little bit. Again, this is light from the moon, you know, getting trapped in a wing. Just a little bit of that. Then I'm gonna add some dots in this section too, where we have that glow to make it even glowy. You can tap some of them, but you don't have to. Same with here. I'm gonna add some of those white dots to this glow section and tap some of them. Now I'll finish up by adding a couple stars. So you can add some intentional dots that look a little bit bigger for our stars. You see a couple larger ones, not many. And then I'm gonna add actual stars, so it's gonna be a dot. And then from there, line up, line down, line left, line right. And I'm gonna add a few of those, line up, line down, line left, line right. So do you see two glowing stars there? And I'm gonna add a, one glowing somewhere on the bottom, maybe right here. Up, down, left, right. And ta-da! Our beautiful fairy is done. And of course, you guys, it's not done until you love it. So continue working on it for as long as needed, adding whatever you need to add to it um, until you feel done. Now, something I want to mention in case something went wrong with your fairy outline, let's say, how do you fix it? I would say there is an easy way to fix it. Make sure it's dry, though, as you just color match the moon color. So start with white. And if you need to add a smidge of purple there or a smidge of blue, you can do that. So pre-mix it and almost like trim your outline. So let me show you an example. I don't need to fix anything personally. But if I wear, for example, I can just take straight white and, you know, bring it in a little bit more. Do you see? I can fix anything that I want with just taking the color from the background and trimming my silhouette um, with it to fix whatever. So whatever the background color is there, you can take that color and trim your silhouette to whatever shape you want to. And last thing that you're gonna need to do is to sign it. So make sure you don't forget that important step. Find a good spot wherever that may be. And put your name or your initials or anything else that you would like and after that you are officially done thank you all for joining me you guys please feel free to share your results with us we always love to see how they turned out um, there is a link in the description of this video to a Facebook group where we encourage everyone to post their results so we feel like we did it together um, so we have that community moment of looking at each other's paintings but also feel free to show it off, especially if you're proud of it or if you have any questions. You can ask them there. Um, yeah, we would love to see how they turned out. If this is your first time and you're not familiar with our channel, maybe you accidentally, 
you know ended up here somehow so glad you're here so glad you made it feel free to check out all the other tutorials we have here we have so many and we have more coming up that's being uploaded or scheduled as a live streams pretty much every week so check out what's coming up next and check out uh, check out what we already have and hopefully we'll get to paint together again bye everyone <laughs>